Welcome to Not Entirely Unlike Tea with Christine Collins. Hey there, this is Christine Collins, and today I wanted to talk about a question that I get asked really often, and I see a lot of confusion and even misunderstanding, which is to do with what is the difference between hypnosis and meditation? Do they serve different purposes? Are they complementary? Are they the same? And I thought it would be really helpful to do some clarifying because many of us who use mindset tools will use different tools that may be similar in some ways or maybe overlapping in terms of what they can help us achieve. When I first started creating hypnosis audios, I noticed that a lot of people who were unfamiliar with the concept of recorded hypnosis were calling them meditations. And I can certainly understand how that misunderstanding could crop up, given that both tools are a voice recording, often set to music, and they're designed to be soothing and relaxing in some way. However, that is essentially where the similarity ends in terms of what their purposes are and how we use them. So hypnosis is a mindset tool that is designed to help us achieve a specific goal, to change a behavior, to shift a belief system, to feel more positively towards some aspect of life. And it is a process that is designed to speak to the subconscious mind. Its focus is around our belief system and how the different beliefs that we have, or sometimes they're referred to as stories or narratives, how they shape and inform our life experience, our choices, our decisions, and our actions. Hypnosis typically involves being in a state of deep relaxation where you are not taking an active part in the process, you are mostly relaxing and listening. Meditation is more focused around enhancing awareness and mindfulness. So it is a little bit more of an active, conscious mind process, whereas hypnosis is more of a subconscious process. People may use meditation tools with an aim of increasing mindfulness, reducing stress, increasing self-awareness, strengthening the power of their own mind and awareness in order to be more observant. People that are using hypnosis typically have a specific goal or transformation that they are looking for. So some examples of very popular things that people use hypnosis for are things like quitting smoking, weight release, changing behaviors, habits, patterns, eating habits, exercise habits, success, procrastination, productivity habits. So there are a lot of different things that hypnosis can potentially be used for. Whereas meditation is typically self-directed where the individual is walking themselves through the practice, even if they are using a guided meditation, they are essentially leading the process. In hypnosis, the recipient is relaxed in the process and allowing the hypnotist to guide them through. Hypnosis can be very quick in terms of its results. There's also a benefit to having a repetition of the hypnotic suggestions that are embedded in the recording or process. Hypnosis appears to affect some activity in the anterior cingulate cortex and the dorsolateral prefrontal areas. And these are involved in attention and executive control, whereas meditation is more associated with activity in the prefrontal cortex and decreased activity in the default mode network, which has to do with mind wandering. Hypnosis is associated with neuroplasticity, which has to do with the development of new neural pathways structural and neurochemical changes in the brain. Now, one of the main goals of hypnosis is to help the user to go down into a more deeply relaxed brainwave state, typically the alpha or even the theta, which is slightly deeper. These are brainwave states that we enter into just as we're dozing off, just as we're falling asleep. We're not fully asleep, but we're also not fully alert and awake. And once we are in these deeper brainwaves with the hypnosis process, we become a little bit more pliable, where our minds are a little bit more open to new ideas and creativity, which creates an opportunity to build in some new beliefs, 
some new perspectives, new ways of looking at things. So for example, if we've spent most of our lives carrying around a negative belief about ourselves, feeling inadequate or deficient in some area, or a negative belief about life in general, that things don't work out, we can transform that belief into something that is more constructive, more optimistic, and ultimately more geared towards achieving our goals and success. So meditation can create some transformation through that process of self-awareness, but with hypnosis, the goal is transformation. The objective is to shift some things that aren't working in terms of our specific thought patterns. I know a lot of people who find that they have a lot of internal mind chatter and sometimes it's negative or even sometimes most of the time it may be not positive. Both of these practices can be helpful where meditation is useful is in learning how to still those thoughts, how to let them kind of float by, whereas in hypnosis we can actually work to change those thoughts into more constructive perspectives and outlooks. And by shifting at the subconscious level, it is going to be deeper and longer lasting and also requires less effort and conscious energy involved. So with meditation, most things are happening at the conscious level, increasing mindfulness, increasing self-awareness. Whereas with hypnosis, through a state of deep relaxation, transformation is happening at the subconscious level. And sometimes people have curiosity around the subconscious. Like, what is it? How do we know there is one? So there have been studies using fMRI, functional MRIs, that have shown brain activity related to decision-making actually occurring before subjects became consciously aware of their decisions. There have also been priming experiments that show that exposure to stimuli can actually influence later behavior without the person having a conscious awareness. There's also evidence for subliminal perception, which has to do with being able to influence behavior and decision-making without that conscious awareness. There's even dream research, studies on REM sleep and on dreaming that give us some insights around unconscious cognitive processes that are happening during sleep. So there's a fair amount of understanding of how the subconscious works in terms of being able to speak to that deeper subconscious level. It does require careful and specific training on the part of a hypnotherapist to know exactly how to write that hypnotic script with very specific words and language that are capable of communicating effectively with the parts of us that aren't conscious and aware. So just as an example of that, when you think about dreams, for instance, dreams are highly symbolic. Our subconscious mind speaks at a symbolic, deeper level that's often represented visually and with representations that aren't necessarily a direct correlation to logic. So all of these things are taken into account when a hypnotic script is created and a hypnosis is recorded. There are also some key elements in terms of language that's used around activating certain aspects of our internal motivation and our reward systems and the types of word choices that will incentivize that transformation. So that is another aspect that makes hypnosis unique to some other mindset tools. And one of the reasons why this is so valuable is because we often are not even aware of some of the issues that may be under lying things that we're noticing, things that we're experiencing that we don't like, that we're not satisfied with. We're not always fully conscious of what all is really going on under the surface. Sometimes there are deep-rooted things that may have occurred a long time ago that we don't necessarily wish to revisit, and it's not necessary to do so when using a tool like hypnosis because it works for you at that subconscious level, shifting and changing the beliefs that were ultimately formed, perhaps out of negative experiences or negative messages received from other people, we can transform those messages into something that's more positive. So receiving messages perhaps early on from a parent, guardian, teacher, sibling, peers, something that's negative or unconstructive about you that you've been carrying around, perhaps unknowingly, 
And that belief is informing all of your actions, choices, behaviors, and life experience. Many times those things will manifest outwardly in behavior patterns that we're not happy with, things that we would like to change. So hypnosis allows us to change those things without necessarily having to go back and actually address each and individual thing. Another related tool correlated with both hypnosis and meditation, and that is visualization. Visualization is incredibly powerful because our brains, especially at the subconscious level, often have difficulty distinguishing between fantasy and reality. And the things that we visualize become recorded in a very similar way to memory, which gives us a tremendous benefit if it is something that we want to recreate in reality. By practicing visualization, there's evidence that we can reduce learning time, we can build new skills faster and better, and we can shift some of the outcomes that we might experience by essentially rehearsing in our mind. Now, when we pair tools together, like visualization and hypnosis together, it becomes double powerful. We can use the hypnosis component to allow for some of that subconscious reprogramming to happen within the belief system. We can get customized hypnosis that relates specifically to our unique goals and desires. And we can build in some visualization practice in the hypnosis process. So there are a lot of different ways that we can kind of use these different tools to our advantage. And it isn't that one tool is better than the other. They just simply do different things. So I definitely encourage you to try some of these different pieces and see which ones resonate the most with you. Many of them have health benefits. Many of them have transformational benefits. Many of them have relaxation benefits. And if you are interested in trying any of these tools at a very low cost, I do offer a hypnosis membership, which is a portal that also includes, in addition to many, many hypnosis audios on lots of different subjects, it also includes several meditations, visualization practices, as well as yoga nidra, which is another deeply relaxing transformational tool. So I hope you found this to be enlightening and useful. And until we connect the next time, I wish you the most magical and creative rest of your day. Thanks for listening. This is Christine Collins at transformcreate.com.